Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Zoo Nerd, coming to you live from my backyard in beautiful Los Angeles, California. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're well, happy, healthy, and having some fun. As we continue our celebration of Shark Week, uh, one of the things that most people think of when they think of or hear about sharks is shark attacks. And today we're going to talk a little bit about shark attacks, um, how common they are, but really how uncommon they are. Uh, many people associate sharks with shark attacks, and they do happen, and they do occasionally end in someone dying. That is unfortunate. But they're not nearly as often as we think. In 2018, sharks killed five people globally around the world. Sharks only killed five people in 2018. In 2019, two. Already this year though, they've killed four. So shark attacks do happen, people do die, and that is sad, but it's much, much lower than most people think. The average is less than 10 people a year, and the odds of being killed by a shark are one in 3.7 million. Vending machines kill four times as many people in a year. Champagne corks, fireworks, lightning strikes, falling, dog attacks, all kill more people in a year than sharks do. But sharks unfortunately get a very bad rap and when sharks do kill someone it gets uh, talked about a lot in the media. Here in the United States, we hear about shark attacks a lot because more shark attacks happen in the United States than in any other country in the world. That um, is because of a lot of things. One, we have a very large population. We have the third largest population in the world. We also have a lot of beaches. That's a lot of area that borders the ocean. And Americans love to go to the beach. So there's more people in more water in more beaches that are going to encounter more sharks. Also, a lot of the beaches in the US that are very popular with a lot of people happen to be in very good territory for sharks. So it happens quite a bit. Uh, Australia and the Bahamas are two of the other world uh, leaders in shark attacks. Again, really nice beaches and a lot of people who visit those beaches are big reasons why shark attacks happen. In the United States, Florida leads the states with the highest numbers in the US, um, usually accounting for about 50% of all shark attacks that happen in a given year. Now with that being said, there's been four people killed by sharks so far in 2020. Two of those were in Australia, two of those were in the United States. Of the ones that happened in the United States, one happened in California. California is also a fairly high state with shark attacks. Uh, California has a very large coastline and a whole lot of people, so that uh, kind of makes sense. The other state that had a fatal shark attack this year in the US is Maine. Uh, it was their first fatal shark attack since the 1930s. Um, it just happened a couple weeks ago. It was a woman who was killed by a great white shark so it does still happen. Uh, with that being said, uh, shark attacks are a lot less common than a lot of people think. 53% of shark attacks, so more than half, occur with people who are either surfing or other board-related water activities. Things like paddle boards, kite surfing, uh, knee boards, boogie boards, all of those things are kind of combined into one category. And that's more than half of all shark attacks, with swimmers taking up another 25%. So those are the two uh, most uh, dangerous activities that people encounter shark attacks. The total number of unprovoked shark attacks worldwide is extremely low given the number of people in ocean recreation each year. Fatality rates have been have been on the decline for decades, reflecting advances in beach safety, medical treatment, and public awareness. 
This underscores the importance of global efforts to improve ocean rescue, medical care, and shark education. And that is a big paragraph that is all from the Florida Museum, who runs the International Shark Attack Files. They are our special shout out for today. Uh, they are the world leading experts on shark attacks. And it's really good that they're located in Florida because Florida is the number one place most likely to encounter a shark attack. Now with shark attacks, there have been many species that have been documented with shark attacks. Uh, many different species of sharks but there are three that are most likely and those three end up with uh, unfortunately killing the most people in shark attacks uh, those are the great white shark sometimes just called the white shark but it's the same shark um, we're actually going to do a separate critter chat about the white shark or the great white shark tomorrow so tune in tomorrow to learn more about this very large and powerful shark, uh, the largest of all predatory fish on the planet. The other two sharks that are most often implicated in shark attacks are the tiger shark, which is another very large shark. Uh, tiger sharks can grow up to about 18 feet in length. That's a very big, big fish. Um, and they are very, very curious animals. Um, shark, tiger sharks have had had many, many different things found inside their digestive tract. Um, in addition to the fish that they normally eat or sometimes um, some marine mammals like seals. But they also have been found to eat things like license plates and jackets and uh, buoys and um, a car tire, paint cans, all sorts of things. They're very, very curious. And if they think it might be food, they might try to eat it. So tiger sharks are very curious sharks. The third uh, shark that is often implicated in shark attacks is called the bull shark. Uh, bull sharks are also a fairly large uh, species of shark, but more important than that, they are very aggressive. Um, bull sharks also have the ability to survive in fresh water longer than most other shark species and they often come into freshwater areas. Uh, they have been documented in rivers, lakes, and streams quite a distance from the ocean. Um, bull sharks have been documented as far up the Mississippi River as St. Louis, um, and in Australia they've been documented almost 200 miles from the coast. So they certainly can survive in freshwater for very long times, and some of their most often attacks have occurred in freshwater. No, I have never seen a bull shark. They are in some aquariums. I have never been to an aquarium that has one. Um, another common shark that is sometimes involved in shark attacks, although on a less fatal basis, are the reef sharks. Reef sharks are fairly common throughout the Caribbean, um, and they are often uh, medium-sized sharks to big sharks they kind of are in that like six to maybe ten foot range um, and they sometimes get very curious with people and often are the sharks that people kind of get in trouble with when someone's either fishing or uh, chumming for sharks that's where they throw bloody fish or other meat into the water to attract sharks and sometimes uh, the reef sharks end up biting people in that time they are not as dangerous because they're smaller. So they usually can bite people, but the bites aren't as big, so people usually don't die. It's very rare that in a shark attack that the shark is actually trying to eat the person. They're usually trying to figure out what it is, and they think it may be a seal or a sea lion some, or a big fish. Um, so they usually take a bite to find out. But the big three sharks, the great white, the tiger, and the bull sharks all have very big teeth, very big mouths, and very powerful animals. So if they take a bite out of you, you usually end up bleeding to death before you can get to help. Um, yeah, so let's talk about some tips, ways you can avoid being a victim of a shark attack. These are some uh, pretty big tips that have been compiled by the International Shark Attack File, and they are some very helpful advice. 
number one, swim with a buddy. Uh, that's very important for a couple of reasons. Two, that's more people paying attention to what's going on around you. You're gonna be less likely to get into trouble like drowning or overwhelmed by a current if you're with somebody else. Um, and if you do get bit by a shark or some other injury that could happen in the water, there's gonna be someone there who can help you. And that's gonna help you survive a lot easier. Uh, the number two tip is stay close to shore. Uh, a lot of shark attacks that happen, happen in, to people who are kind of further out from the shoreline. That's why surfers are often targeted. They're a little further out from shore. Um, and that's kind of an area where sharks tend to hang out, kind of where the water starts to drop off and get a little bit deeper. Number three. Avoid being in the water at dusk and at dawn. Early in the morning, late in the day before the sun goes down. Those are times in which a lot of sharks are active and are looking for food. Um, they're going to be swimming around, checking to see what's going on. And if they come across a person, they're probably gonna take a bite to see what they uh, can find. Number three, or sorry, number four. Don't swim where people are fishing. Also, if you see a lot of fish in the water, you might want to get out. Uh, a lot of fish are what most sharks are looking for. Most sharks eat fish and they are looking for a meal. Um, so if there's a lot of fish in the area, if there's people fishing, especially if people are throwing in any bloody meat or any fish to attract sharks or other uh, fish, that's a very dangerous situation to put yourself in. I know it's a common situation that happens in both the Carolinas and in Florida, where people are fishing off of a pier and people under the pier are swimming. And that can cause a lot of problems and has actually led to quite a few shark attacks in both North and South Carolina and in Florida. Um, those areas tend to be a place where a lot of people fish from shore or from piers and people are swimming in the same areas. So it's a very uh, dangerous situation to put yourself in. Our number five tip, avoid wearing jewelry while swimming. Uh, this is one I had never thought of, but it's a really good tip. Jewelry often sparkles and shines and reflects the light um, and causes light fragmentation, uh, making shiny uh, shapes and glimmering in the water. That's very similar to what a fish looks like and the scales of a fish do very similar things and that may easily attract a shark who's in the area to come and investigate further what is going on. So avoid wearing jewelry. Um, plus in the ocean if you're playing around and you have jewelry on there's a good chance you could lose your jewelry and then you'll be sad because that was your favorite earring that you got from your grandma or your ring or whatever. Uh, so Keep the jewelry safer at home or in a hotel, wherever you're staying. And the final tip for uh, avoiding shark attacks, avoid excessive splashing. This includes if you go to the beach with your dog and if your dog's playing around, don't go into deep water with the dog and be splashing around with the dog. Don't be fighting around in deep water. Um, splashing also causes a lot of noise and sharks may think that that's an injured fish or an injured seal and come closer to investigate. Remember, sharks have really good senses. They have pretty good eyesight. They have really good hearing. They have really good sense of smell. Um, they also can sense electric electricity, so they can sense vibrations. Um, all fish actually have something called a lateral line. That's a sense of uh, uh very sensitive scales down the side of their body that help them to sense vibrations in the water. That's how fish in a school are able to move together. Uh, they can feel the vibrations of the fish next to them. Sharks have that too. So if they feel the vibration of, of movement, they're going to come investigate what that is. And that could be a very uh, problematic situation and could lead to a shark attack. So with all of these things about shark attacks and um, like I said, the average is less than 10 people killed a year. So it's pretty low of actually getting killed. Um, 
The biggest problem is actually that humans kill a lot more sharks than sharks kill humans. On a yearly basis, humans kill about 100 million sharks globally in a year. Um, because of that, many species of sharks are becoming threatened and endangered. And sharks are an important part of the food chain. They eat a lot of other uh, medium-sized predators. And when shark numbers decrease, those medium-sized predators increase. And then they eat the big fish and the other um, prey species that sometimes we as humans want to eat as well. And uh, that has caused problems in some uh, species specifically with some uh, species of stingrays. Sharks sometimes love to eat a stingray, and in places where shark numbers have declined, sometimes stingray numbers have gone up, and stingrays have then started to overfeed on the, the food items that they eat, the smaller fish and like shrimp and other things like that. Our special shout out is for the International Shark Attack File. Uh, they are funded by the Florida Museum of Natural History and the University of Florida. I'll be sharing more tips from them uh, later today, including some videos. They also have a ton of information on their website about many different types of sharks. So if you're interested in sharks, you can check that out and learn a little bit more. Uh, I see a question of how far can they smell blood? Well, there's over 400 to 500 species of shark each species of shark has a little bit different ability to smell blood. There's a big myth that they can smell blood for a mile away, one drop of blood. That is not true. They cannot do that. Um, they do have really good sense of smell. They can smell blood over different distances, but each species is going to vary a bit on that. And some of them will use other senses more important than their sense of smell. So um, they can track blood, but they will often use their vision once they get closer to it to kind of cue in to what they're going after. They'll also use their hearing and their sense of vibrations to detect things. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today about shark attacks. I know it's not always the most exciting subject, but I felt it was important to talk about because it is something that most people think happens a lot when in reality, as we've talked about, it's very, very rare with less than 10 people dying in a given year. Um, I'll be sharing more information about shark attacks and the tips that you can use to avoid shark attacks up on the Facebook profile for Zoo Nerd later today. So take a look at those. And as always, feel free to like, share, follow, and subscribe to any of my content on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and on my website at jeremythezoonerd.com. Tomorrow will be our concluding Critter Chat about Shark Week, and we'll be talking about great white sharks. So join me tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time to learn more about these monster-sized sharks, the great white shark. Until tomorrow, be happy, be healthy, have fun. See you later.